Welcome. This is the Global Climate Report for May 2011. Most of this data comes from the NOAA National Climate Data Center. However, if you use any of the other world climate data sources, you will likely get a very similar result. Let's first take a look and see how global temperatures fared over this last month. First let's start with the temperature anomaly for three different cases. The lower plot shows land only, the middle plot shows oceans only, and the top plot shows land and oceans combined. Global land temperatures were the seventh warmest on record, whereas ocean temperatures were the eleventh warmest on record. That is primarily due to the lingering effects of the La Nina, which causes the cooling of the eastern Pacific. The combined land and ocean temperatures were the tenth warmest on record, being about 0.5 degrees above the 20th century average. That means that it has been 35 years since we've had a month of May that has been below the 20th century average. The chances of that happening randomly is infinitesimal. Now let's take a look and see what areas were warm and what areas were cold. Here is a global map showing the temperature normally by area. The largest blue dots represent a 5 degree cooling in that area and the largest red dots represent a 5 degrees of warming. Now this is measured with respect to an average not of the 20th century but the last 30 years of the 20th century, 1971 to 2000. But that period contains a substantial amount of global warming. So to see how this would compare with the 20th century average, you would have to imagine all the red dots being one size larger and all the blue dots one size smaller. Even so, it is clear that the plot is dominated by red. The whole of the eastern side of the US, South America, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, Siberia are all unusually warm. Whereas Canada, the western US and Australia are relatively cool, which is probably due to the lingering effects of La Nina. One of the best measures of whether a climate is warming or cooling is to compare the number of high temperature records with the number of low temperature records. In a stable climate those numbers should be approximately equal. In a warming climate there will be more high temperature records set and in a cooling climate there will be more low temperature records set. Let's take an example of the United States and see which way that calculation goes. We've heard a lot over the last few months on YouTube about how freezing cold everybody is in the United States and how this disproves global warming. So this should be the acid test. Here are the locations in the US that set a high temperature record during the month of May. There are a total of 2,128 such records. And for the year so far, we've had 12,526 high temperature records set. Now that might seem like a lot. However, there are tens of thousands of weather stations across the United States. And most of these seem to be set in the eastern half of the United States and in Alaska. So now we need to compare that with the number of low temperature records set. Here, marked in blue, are the locations of the stations that reported one or more low temperature records during the month of May. There are a total of 1,729 such reports. For the year to date, we have set 5,302 low temperature records. So now let's compare these figures. We can see for May that 55% of the records are for high temperatures and only 45% for low temperatures. We could test the significance of this statistically and it comes out to be 9 sigma, which gives us a very high degree of confidence in the conclusion that there's warming going on. For the year to date, the difference is even more stunning, with 70% of the records set being high temperature records and only 30% being low temperature records. And only one month in the last year has had more low temperature records than high temperature records, and then only by a couple of hundred. Another measure of climate is the amount of ice and snow there is about. After this very snowy winter, let's take a look at the Northern Hemisphere snow and ice coverage. You will find that it is the third lowest in the last 40 years. Which just goes to show that some places got more snow and ice, while other places got a lot less. Northern Hemisphere sea ice shows a similar pattern with the third lowest extent on record. It is 6% below the 30 year average, whereas in the southern hemisphere it's only 1% above the 30 year average. We 
We've had some extreme weather events over the last month. In, in the United Kingdom, March to May was the warmest spring period on record, with high temperatures and low rainfall. As you can see here, much of England had a fifth of its normal rainfall during this period. A similar story in Spain, where it had its third warmest May on record. And yet again in Mexico and the southeast in the United States, where very dry conditions have led to huge wildfires. Texas and Alaska are suffering similarly. The Missouri River has the opposite problem. Heavy spring rainfall plus melting snow has caused some of the largest uh, floods on record. In South Africa, on the 5th of May, one year's worth of rainfall fell in a day. Australia has not only had one of the coldest springs on record, it also has had one of the wettest with huge floods in the Northern Territories. So that wraps up the report for this month. I have done one other such climate report which you can find on my channel. I have some other videos about global warming and also the state of the sun listed on that same channel. So you're welcome to go there and take a look through them for your enjoyment. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.